There's a lot of talk about football on the um, the foosball in, in yep. the live in the chat so far. Mm-hmm. Who's Apparently. on your fantasy football team, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> Is Gandalf or or <laughs> or or, uh, or or some of the hobbits or any of those guys in your fantasy? It's basically Dungeons and Dragons for guys who don't play D and D. It is, it is, I yeah. Think. There was yeah. a skit on Saturday Night Live last night with with J Lo. She was the guest, and oh, they yeah? were doing some home She's makeover good. show. And she was she was married to this super nerdy guy who was into <laughs> Smurfs. <laughs> All his stuff was Smurfs. So you kept talking about Smurfy and. And yeah, he had a tattoo that said what Smurf life or something on his back with a Smurf picture life. above, and he's like, "I know, I know, I should have gotten Papa Smurf." That's so, awesome. Anyway, hey everybody, this is Matt, and we're at Texas Toast Guitars, and we are live at five. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we are, we are, we have a skeleton crew today, Chris. It's just you and me, brother. Yep. No, Mrs. Toast. Mrs. No, Toast uh, is not uh, with us. She's actually in uh, in New Jersey. She might be watching the New York Football Giants right now. Uh, maybe I don't know. She may actually type in something. I don't know if she's watching uh-huh. or if she's recuperating from. I think she went to a party last night. So yeah. Yeah. In fact, I know she went to a party last night because I talked to her this morning. So, so. she's probably recuperating mm-hmm. from said party. Yep. Yep. So she comes back tomorrow, but it's just so it's just you and me tonight. And um, man, I am like. Beat up today, dude. Yeah. It's a lot of stuff that's been going on lately. It was a busy week. Yeah, it was. We had, and it's, <laughs> it started right with uh, uh, Buddy Guitar Night on Tuesday. Mm. And that went until... We had such a great Buddy Guitar Night. It was yeah. the last Buddy Guitar Night. It was definitely the last Buddy Guitar Night of the year. And I think it's going to be the last Buddy Guitar Night that we do for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, but man, it was a great way to close out the whole, whole notion of... Buddy Guitar Night. We were here till like almost midnight, and we had people from all over the globe. We had guys from Australia and New Zealand. For real. Longmont. I mean, they were from everywhere. <laughs> so Far reaches of Longmont. Yes, yes. Australia. Deepest, darkest yeah. Longmont. Uh-huh. So actually, no, um, and we got a new pin router, too. It's actually right here. You, oh, Chris is going to... So this is the new pin router. Um, I don't, I've n- not actually used the new pin router yet. We haven't even turned it on. Cause it's not, yeah, we don't have the, the wiring hooked up for it yet. Yeah, uh, so Sparky D actually did hook up some wiring for us, but we did not, what do you, but he, he we've got a circuit for it, but we, we don't have, it's not ready to go. Chris is adjusting the camera because again, we have a skeleton crew today. Thank yeah. you, Chris. Uh-huh, is that better? I think it's pretty good. That's better. So. It's better yep. when I'm not in the picture. No way, that man. really good. Everybody wants you to be in the picture. <laughs> They're like, hey, man, where's Chris? Yeah. We need to see more Chris. More Chris action. Hot Chris action. That's what people want. Yeah, yeah. So the new pin router is really cool. What? Honestly, I don't know what I'm going to do with the new pin router. Yeah. I mean, the, the whole idea would be that we would leave one bit set up in my beloved pin router with the corresponding pin and then have another bit that it just everything just sort of stays in place and we have dedicated tools that do dedicated jobs for example you could leave the the new pin router could be set up for next i don't know um anyway guys so stay tuned we will be doing a uh, full comparison of my beloved pin router the old school jet versus my new pin router which is yet to have a name um or yet to be named um uh, but you can actually still get these from Grizzly. They're still available. Um, not many people know this. Grizzly sent us that machine free. That's a, like that was. A, they were like, "Wow, your YouTube channel is so awesome, and you're like so so into pin routers. We're just gonna give you this pin router for you to review and have, and just so that's what's gonna happen, guys. We're gonna review the uh, the Grizzly pin router, and uh, thanks to the people at Grizzly for sending that out to us. So that was very very cool. All right, that didn't really happen, but it'd be funny if it did. Maybe it did. <laughs> um, okay, so what do you want to talk about first? Uh, oh, so, so we had Buddy Guitar Night on Tuesday, and that went long. Then we had Bart McCrory from the Crash Pad Studio was in on Wednesday to do some YouTube stuff. Um, it's, just been, it's just been like nuts. We did a, a guitar reveal of Andrew St. Pierre's Blue 
strat with the Texas Toast neck on it. And um, that's a great video. And that's probably our most popular reveal video yet. I don't know, is that because the words PRS or the, the letters PRS was in the title? Every, I don't know, every guitar reveal video has gotten bigger and bigger um, each, each new one that we do. Yeah. And I don't know if this one is because it's just the latest or if it's because it has the word PRS in it or if it's just that awesome. I really don't know. It could be because <laughs> I'm trying to make a term from a different YouTube channel work, and we're, we're going to get to that later in this video. <laughs> but that was also another one. We got a bunch of snarky comments about that and my Plywood Les Paul project. That was another thing. We, uh, the Plywood Les Paul, we built a super tacky Les Paul out of Plywood Part 2 uh, aired on YouTube this week, and that's been, that's been hugely popular. Yeah. And I've gotten a bunch of snarky comments on the last two videos that we've done. And I thought, this would be a great time. I love calling people out on snarky comments. Yeah. But I don't have anyone's actual name. So it's just going to be me telling you some things that I got. Comments on. <laughs> and the cool thing is you love, you love snarky comments. And the more comments, the more people watch the videos, the more comments you get. Yeah. Both snarky and not snarky. Yeah. So. And to so be fair, we've gotten a lot of. Fun. Hey, that's really yeah. neat. And it's mostly that. Yeah. And I think. Our channel has more positive stuff than most people's we do. We don't really talk too much shit about people. No, so, but, yeah, but I mean, it's, yeah, well, it, yeah. But yeah. anyway, it's, the, the, the negative stuff's really fun because it's, it's entertaining for us all throughout the week to make fun very, of those people. Very, very entertaining, you guys. And, uh, yeah. But anyway, so let's get to snarky comments. But before we do, thanks to everybody who's watching. Like I said, Chris and I don't have a whole lot of, of uh, support here. Today, so it's just going to be him looking at the screen. Everybody who's watching, thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate it when you guys do so and sharing the videos and all that stuff. It's it's growing the channel is is a tricky thing to do, um, but we with your help we are we are moving forward. And thanks so much for doing that. Yeah. So if I don't if I don't call you out specifically or answer your question specifically, I it, it's not because I don't want to. It's just because I, I there's so much other stuff going on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so thanks everybody who's tuning in and will tune in. On with the snarky comments. So the, the first video that we did this week was the super tacky Les Paul out of plywood. And I've been getting a lot of what's so special about that, what's different from that, between that and some 60s and 70s Japanese guitars. I don't know. I never said that there was anything special about it. Um, you guys have to realize that some of these videos we just do because they're cool. And we think that you will like them. And if you keep watching them, <laughs> we'll keep doing them. They don't have to be, there doesn't have to be a reason for the video or a reason to build it, um, which kind of segues into, so, well, some, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and we're proven right by you saying, you know what, I'm going to build a plywood guitar. Yeah. And I bet it's one of the most popular things we've ever done. And mm -hmm. it, it's proving to be that. It's on track to being at yeah. least barely popular. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And... And so that's that's reason enough to do it. Yeah. We didn't make the plywood Les Paul video because we think it's going to sound great. Or, or be or, a, the next revelation, <laughs> no, revolution no. In, in guitar technology. No. In fact, yeah. I, I think it's just going to look <laughs> neat. In fact, I even said that in the very first video. I called out, um, one of the inspirations for that was this artist I knew in Texas named Lightning McDuff. And he made this like three-dimensional like uh, um, crescent moon thing out of plywood. It was really neat. And you could see all the different plies. And I thought, hey, that's cool. And and um, so, and he used hillbilly plywood to make it. And and yeah, it was it was way cooler than a banana tape to the wall. So, for, <laughs> uh, and I don't know what he ended up getting for it. But, but um, yeah, the plywood Les Paul wasn't, wasn't built because I want to see if a plywood Les Paul will sound as good. I don't know. And I don't care. I, I'm just making it because I think it's neat. So, and I'm making a video about it because I think you guys would like to watch it. And so far, some people have enjoyed it's, it. That's true, yeah. One yeah. person told me, however, that it's a colossal waste of time. And I was thinking, you know, what is it that I do in the grand scheme of the universe that isn't a colossal waste of time? This is very existential. It really is. Um, and, and, and the flip side to that is... What should I be doing that isn't a colossal waste of time? 
should I be making Les Pauls that are exactly like the ones Gibson makes? That, to me, seems like a colossal waste of time. Because you can just go buy those. They're already done. I, so I'm not sure what this guy said was, um, was going to be a... I, you know what? I don't know what half of the half of the, the haters that that like to tell me I'm doing things the wrong way or uh -huh. I'm stupid. I don't really know what they mean. And, there was and, that. There was the the bell carve one mm. that you did the carve wrong. Yeah, someone said that I did the carve wrong, and um, and so I went to their page to get some tips, and they don't have any content at <laughs> all. <laughs> so it's really just someone you know. I, I think he had like a picture of Christy Brinkley. Uh, in a bathing suit on his for like his avatar. No, that's, oh, that's my page. Oh, was it you that sent it? No, that, or no, it was, copied me. It was a Ferrari. Was a Ferrari. Yeah, with like uh, Kathy Ireland on it or something. <laughs> I don't, I don't know what his avatar. I think it was a Ferrari or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so he's our age. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah. Um, and his mom kept his room exactly the same, <laughs> as, <laughs> which as, is good as it was when he yeah, never cause, left. Because when he yeah. <laughs> So anyway, um, moved in after his second semester of yeah. college, moved back in. Yeah. So right. and then we then we published the um, the uh, if Paul Reed Smith can do it, so can we guitar reveal video. That was also very very well received. That's a neat neat guitar that we built specifically for Andrew St Pierre, who is unfortunately not going to be joining us tonight because his wife is having a dinner party. Um. So I don't know what he's going to be doing. I guess he has to put on a suit and you know look nice. Maybe a sweater. I don't know what he does. He'll tell us. <laughs> so, um, that is cool. So, and lots of people came on to that, to that uh, uh, in the comment section and told me that the headstock was a giant step backwards and, and represents uh, uh, nothing cool and the strings aren't straight. And I'm like, you know, I think all, after almost every single video I make, I, use, I say these words. If you're so smart, build it yourself. So why are you telling me that I'm doing it wrong? Just go make your own thing. Somebody said that about the... Oh, more than one the, person the, said the it. Yeah, the, the air guitar? Yeah, oh yeah, that the strings don't come off the nut straight enough. And okay. Oh, that part? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But anyway, um, yeah. So anyhow, if you... I guess if you don't like what I do, then you can make your own stuff. And that is totally awesome. I hope that you guys do that. Yep. So, um, are we ready to move? Yeah. What time? Okay. Let's move move are forward. We moving forward to our yeah. Unless I, don't, that, I mean, the snarky comments only go so far. <laughs> oh, one guy. One guy told me that um, if I think plywood necks are bad, which I never said that I did, um, that I should tell Les Claypool his bass sounds bad because of all the laminations. I'm like, I I never said that plywood is going to sound good or bad. I'm just making a guitar because I think it looks neat. And I never said anything negative about Les Claypool. But I bet you he likes Les Claypool a lot. Like a lot, a lot. You know what I mean? I don't... I don't. Guys, I'm not here to, to make fun of your... I like the random stuff. tangents that people oh, go off oh, on. I thought you liked it when I did that. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Go tell Les Claypool he sucks then. Why would I do that? <laughs> you go yeah. tell him. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah bring him by. Yeah. <laughs> oh, maybe gosh. he does suck. I don't know. I liked Primus. I don't well, know what maybe, that yeah. guy's problem yeah, was. But, yeah. You know, hey, who knows? So, and in the Andrew St. Pierre, okay, one of the things that I got a lot of emails about in the Andrew St. Pierre, uh, if PRS can build a strat, so can we, was I am trying to uh, have a list of, of bullet points that we can talk about on guitars. And one of them was philosophy of use. And that's why we're here today, to talk about philosophy of use for guitars. Um, now, I have borrowed heavily from lots of different uh, content creators on YouTube to build my channel. And one of those guys is, as a number of you have pointed out, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Nut and Fancy. Now, if you've watched my videos for any amount of time, you will be able to have seen the, to put those two pieces together. It's, it's very, very obvious. But he has a, a thing that he does about philosophy of use. And the, the whole notion is that uh, sometimes it's easier to justify purchasing something if you can come up with 
what will it be perfect for? What is the philosophy of use for said item? Now, guys, this doesn't work if you only have one guitar. If you only have one guitar, stop watching now because the philosophy of use for that guitar is everything you need a guitar to do. Eh? So, um, I'm getting a call from someone, but I don't know who it is. Um, so anyway, if you, so let's talk a little bit about philosophy use. Cause I kind of, I kind of threw you under the bus a little bit. Yeah. I thought that we, we talked about it before the video and you just said but you I weren't listening. listening. So in a, in a way, it's my fault. Mm, it, in a way <laughs> we could have had that off at the past, but we didn't. Yeah. So I had Chris on camera and he had that deer in the headlights look for a second. I had the deer in the headlights up <laughs> for a couple of days. I think after that, I, it took me quite a while to figure out. What the hell you were talking about? So let's talk a little bit about philosophy of use. And I want to hear what your guys' philosophy of use is, are, for some of your guitars. And the whole idea here is this is going to make it easier to justify that new guitar purchase with the, the old lady. Let's face it. There's not a lot of women who watch this channel. I wish there were more. But if there's ladies watching and you need to justify guitar purchases to your dudes, then it's the same idea. You, you just how about that? But I don't like to use the term significant other. That just sort of seems a little bit too politically correct to me. To your spouse. How about that? whatever? Justify it to whoever. Justify it to yourself. I don't care. It's really all you that's what you're doing, is just yeah. justifying it to yourself. So let's start with our POU discussion. The reason it didn't exactly work out on that one, because the Stratocaster in any guise is a fairly versatile instrument. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? But after that, we thought, well, what's the... So, look, uh, if you are looking for a, a legitimate philosophy of use for a guitar, what would the philosophy of use... Or what, what guitar would you pick if your philosophy of use was, I'm going to give this to my seven-year-old kid who's just learning how to play? Oh, we just talked about this the other day. Yeah, so you would give him a 1954 vintage Fender Stratocaster, Right. Yes. Eh, no, why would you do that? Um, okay, my philosophy of use is I am going to play classical music. Oh, no, I'm going to play in smoky jazz bars with lots of red velvet and guys sitting at a piano. The ultimate guitar for that is a double neck BC Rich bitch. <laughs> I was going to say Warlock. So oh, yeah, we're on yeah. the same page. Double neck Ironbird. Yeah. So you see what I mean here? So, so guys, we'd like to hear some of what you guys think some cool philosophies of use are. And... Or if, you're, or if you are trying to justify a new guitar, tell us what it is, and we will tell you a great philosophy of use for that guitar. How about that? <laughs> One guy was like, my philosophy of use is irritate my neighbors. Cool. So you probably don't have any nylon string classical guitars then. Right? Yeah. Okay. That's right. So, we got anything uh, we got brewing um... here? Um... Nobody's given us their philosophy of use. Okay. Is anyone saying philosophy of use is dumb? Uh, no. We what? Had some, Come on, we, guys. We had some what the hell is philosophy of use earlier, but but now you've covered it. Do you think I've explained it in a way that at least gets your brain? So here's the other thing, guys. If you... Uh, I knew this would happen, too. Philosophy of use, it's a guitar. I'm going to play guitar on it. Y yeah, but, but that's sort of... Uh, so what it kind of so, heads off the whole yeah, conversation. Yeah, what does this of, guitar do that the other guitars don't do, or what? What are you hoping this guitar will do yeah. that the other guitars don't do? Or now, let me. I'm, I'm going to borrow from Lieutenant Colonel Not Fancy one more time. Okay. And if you again, if you watch my channel for any amount of time, you've you've already gotten this one, and that is first cool and second cool. And as I've pointed out numerous times, again, this I, all this stuff is stuff that I stole from from the Colonel. Um, first cool is value. What does it, you know, does it, does it, does it do something that, uh, uh, does it, does the cost low? Does it perform high? Does it have a bunch of features that are cool? That's very quantifiable. Mm -hmm. The second cool is that it's just neat. It gives me the fizz. By the way, I stole that from Wrangler Star. Um, so the whole notion of, you know, uh, I just, I just like it because I like it. And I think that's a perfectly acceptable reason to buy any guitar. I think it's cool and I want to have it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can't can't fault you for that. What's? What <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Ken Tipton said the last guitar I built was so I would practice more and learn to actually play. I ended up giving it to my dad for his birthday. Now I have to make another. Now, philosophy of build is a very different thing than yeah. philosophy of use. Yeah. Because um, I think philosophy of build could be, I have a pickguard screw for a Telecaster. I have to make. <laughs> we have a pickguard that has inspired two guitars. No fewer than two guitars. <laughs> well, I have a pickguard. I'll, I'll make a guitar with it. What are some other cool POUs, Chris? I've got one. Okay. Family heirloom. Okay. So here's one. In fact, this came into the shop just today. This is my friend Jim Fuller's uh, Flying V. Now this isn't, you know, anything that like you couldn't just buy this. Lots of people had, this is a warm off Flying V that um, he had in the 80s. And he wanted it. Uh, Did it, Karen get it for him? I think I want to say Karen got this for him, and the neck went went south mm -hmm. or twisted or something, and so it sort of languished. And man, this thing's super super light. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to build a new neck for this, and I think he wants us to put a top on it. But his, his uh, so Jim lives in Las Vegas, and his son um, uh, James came in and brought us this guitar. He went out there for. Thanksgiving or something and brought the guitar back and um, and and we're like and so we're looking at it and checking it out and he says and Chris can back me up on this be really careful with this guitar because it's the one that I remember my dad playing all the time when he was a little kid and James is like probably 26 or 7 I, I don't know how old James yeah. is but so this is a cool guitar and it's something that you know again it's not it's nothing special to anyone but the Fullers. It's it's super cool, but it means way more to them than another one that's exactly like this that somebody else could buy. So I think Family Heirloom is a great POU for, for a guitar. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't, it's really, it's 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 very hard to put a, put too fine a point on that. You know, I mean, just, I think Family Heirloom is, that's reason enough, mm -hmm. right, right? Yep. Okay, anything else? What's going um, on? Yeah, yeah. Um, 97 Fender SRV Strat. I guess my POU would be collector's item. I think collector's item is a great okay. reason to have that. Now, um, be careful, though, with collectibles, right? Because it may or may not go up in value. Well, yeah. Or it could all just yeah fall apart all of a sudden. You never know. Like baseball cards. Do you think or that Cabbage Patch Kids? Do you what at, or Beanie Babies? What, at what point though are all three like of which I had? <laughs> I would have I, I would have also accepted all of which I have. <laughs> well, no, because I got out of them right at the oh, right yeah, time. Okay. That's why I'm living the high life now. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. What do you think the um, collector value thing is? That like gonna keep going up, up, up? Like what is a what's a '59 Les Paul going for these days? Not like the one I that. Don't know. that you know, yeah, I don't. I, I, I think whatever. some of that stuff's kind of flattened out. I think there's not as many big time collectors as there were. I've heard that things okay. are going, but I also still see some of that that midline stuff going for more than it used to go for. Yeah. So, so while the the tippity top may have flattened out a little bit, there's still lots of action going on in some of those lower price points. And, and some guitars just keep getting older. They so like. Well, I guess they all do. But what I mean is, like the seventies Gibsons that uh -huh. you couldn't give away. Yeah. Well, I saw, I saw someone had like a Gibson Corvus for like nine hundred dollars. Yeah, or like, like you all of a sudden those, be are, kidding those are pretty good too now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all of a the, sudden these are the awesomest the, uh, guitars they the ever made. The grabber. The grabber. Yeah. And the, the yeah. And don't get me wrong, guys. I I like all those seventies Gibsons mm, almost as much as the next guy, but there was a time when they weren't cool. And the only thing that's changed is they've gotten older and now all of a sudden they're cool. Maybe the only other thing that's changed is that guys who wanted that stuff now have bucks to throw around and they can't get the things that aren't moving unless they're, you know, the super high-end collector guys so you get what you can get and, and you make moves with that, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the, the thing that always, that I think of is my drum story where I bought an old set of Pearl drums. They were like from the late 60s. Mm -hmm. And I joined some drum forum because I wanted to find out about them. And I said, hey, I just bought these old, these vintage Pearl drums. Oh, you guys and this, know where this, this is going. And this guy says, you know, 
sometimes old things are just old. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, yeah, vintage means there's some sort of allure there. There's some sort of panache. And apparently Lud or, uh, pearls from 69 were not vintage. I took issue with that because I thought they were really cool. Did you, sell, but, did you tell him he, he was, wa he was wasting no, I, a colossal I, amount of time? I, no, I just sort of <laughs> laughed it off and thought, that's, that's true. What you a know? poop bag. And to a guy that's really into vintage drums and, and cool old vintage uh -huh. drums... Yeah, my 69 Japanese Not drums cool probably weren't enough. very neat. But, okay. but uh, and I think that happens a lot with, with some of that other stuff, you know. And, uh, you know, you, you really want to be into old guitars or you you really are into old guitars, oh, but, but you just can't afford. But then you the talk really to a snob and it's stuff. like, oh, yeah. you got horn uh -huh. swoggled. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so anyway. So, what, is there any more, any more POUs or, or <laughs> by the collectability is, is certainly a great. Uh, uh huh. Uh, uh, philosophy of use uh, or philosophy of ownership <laughs> POU to get chicks dude to get chicks should be everyone's highest <laughs> priority yep right uh, yeah what guitar does that for you the Gibson Corvus <laughs> does not do that for you uh -huh. I don't know is there anybody out there watching who owns a Gibson Corvus and you know had a, a one night stand with a supermodel because of it I would like to hear that story. I think I might be waiting for a while on mm -hmm. that one. What else we got, Chris? Uh, just because it's old doesn't mean they're banging instruments. True. Drums are kind of tricky because they're meant to be hit with a stick. Well, yeah. So and I, and I think he's talking about guitars too. Just because oh, it's old okay. doesn't. Yeah, just because it's old doesn't mean it's cool. Yeah. Yeah. There's 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 plenty of old stuff that's not cool. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't you say that you you had an occasion very very recently to buy a minty mint uh, uh, one owner Nissan Sentra? <laughs> no. What was it that your dad saw at the at the car lot that was like this is like a oh yeah yeah yeah, new... yeah it was an eighty seven. Um, <laughs> it wasn't a Nissan Sentra. I don't think it was a no. It wasn't a Sentra, but it was something <laughs> as equally bad. And and it was really pretty expensive for what it was. And, and the the I was like, really, you guys have why do you original have that? paint, baby? Yeah, original paint, original everything, and it only had like eighty thousand miles on it. And for an eighty, it was. Woo! And they were like, man, it's really neat, and it's you know. And they were all all the salesmen were it's young, really and, clean. And it was yeah, it was like this cool old throwback thing. And I'm thinking, <laughs> those were the worst, man. I mean, they 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 did what they were supposed to do, which is run and drive forever, um, but. Nobody well, wants one of those now. Now, nah, proven I, by mm, it still being on the lot for nine grand or whatever it was. The so, and that's the thing. Um, for for people who just want a guitar, yeah, they're, they you don't stand in the mirror with a. Okay, I'm gonna get into trouble with this, but you de generally speaking, you don't take your bolt-on neck Epiphone Les Paul as a 50 year old man. And stand in the mirror and, you know, have rock and roll fantasies. If you're, you know, a young guy and that's your first guitar, then you absolutely do that. Mm -hmm. So your POU is a little different depending on your age, I think. Mm -hmm. So, um, but but the electric guitar and the muscle car and there, there's so many things that like kind of uh, elicit a, a, a visceral response at, in just owning those. And I think that's that's a great reason to have... Any any electric guitar, I think, is just because it's because it's cool and it's badass. Um, but people hear with their eyes. So uh, Chris is in a surf band. Why don't you guys play Les Pauls? Because you can't get a surf tone. No, I mean really. Why, yeah. Why don't Why don't you play BC Rich Warlocks? Because it doesn't look right in the band. I think. So the so the philosophy of use for the Jazzmaster and the Mose Wright and some of those things are like they, they really fit the aesthetic mm -hmm. of the band. So. Yeah, and for a long time, that's one of the reasons that I bought guitars and that, or that I would keep guitars is if I can't play it in the band on stage, I'm not going to have it. Yeah. I'm not going to keep it. Okay. All right. So I guess that was the POU for, for a lot of the guitars. And it's probably and in a lot of ways still sort of is. I think, you know, so some, somebody told me that, that uh, uh, aesthetics are a, a branch of philosophy. Okay. Uh, a philosophication, I believe, is what the word is. <laughs> philosophization. Philosophizing, and um, and 
you know, so like if you see a rocket, okay, so if you show up to, let's say you're, you're Brian Nutter. My mm-hmm. man, my man crush, Brian Nutter. Keep talking, and I'm here. Will you get me one? Uh huh. And you, yeah, and you, you're in Nashville, and you go to the, um, you've got a gig, and you got to do some session work for some famous country guy, and you show up with an SG. Well, I, it, it just doesn't quite look right because you're in Nashville, and dang it, in Nashville we play tellies or whatever. What, what else do they play in Nashville, Chris, besides Telecasters? What's the most popular session guitar? Gretsch's. Gretsch's? Sure. Okay. But those country guys all play telly so much so that it's an it's, it's a uh, it's T- Chris is saying that tell that yeah that country guys play play Telecasters so much that it's it's an institution uh, of a guitar. Now here's another thing. Brian builds guitars that have all kinds of they have three humbucking pickups and they all the pickups can be. Individual coils, they can all be on or all be off, and very lots of like, thank you, um, all kinds of, of, of things that the guitars do. And his POU is I want to show up at a recording session with one guitar. You know what I mean? So you show up for a recording deal and you don't know who you're playing for. I, I'm not sure how that works because no one in their right mind would want me to play on their album. But you show up, it you better at least look like you. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, you show up with a, with a, again the BC Rich Ironbird, unless you're doing, you know, overdubbing for CC Deville. Do you remember the Ironbird? Uh, vaguely, yeah. Yeah, it was yeah. very pointy. Uh huh. Yeah. So anyway, there's lots of lots of philosophies of use for guitars, guys, and um, I'd like to hear yours. If you're just now joining us, thank you for joining us. It um, it's always cool to have you guys on and spend an hour with us on Sunday. Um, if I don't answer your question or if I don't acknowledge you in per, or, you know, uh, specifically, it's not because I, I don't want to, it's just I can't see what's going on. And it's just Chris and I today, and he's, he's doing the best that he can with what he's got here. So, <laughs> what, is there anything going on with the... Uh... Uh, yeah, shave your beard. Who said that? Um, My mom? Dan Elson, yeah. Oh. Uh-huh. He also says, give me pizza. What's your philosophy of pizza? Um, I, I, so, okay, this is a good one. Because every pizza has a philosophy of pizza, I think. Okay. Sometimes you just want pizza. Uh-huh. And that, you know, Tony's frozen dollar thing, mm-hmm. that will scratch the itch a little bit. Okay. But sometimes you want, like, you just want to gorge yourself on really awesome pizza. Right. And for my money, that's Massimo's or Santorino's. Uh huh. Because in Denver. Now, if you're back east, I bet you you got like your your go to pizza place. If you're in Chicago, a whole different story. But you know, philosophy of food is another one of those things that it does it. It elicits a response based on culture and and location. And I think guitars can be the same way. Yeah, especially yeah, especially pizza. Pizza and and what's the other what's Chili is so a big than anything. one. Chili is a big one. Yeah, yeah. Mexican food, green chili. Mm-hmm. Green chili is a huge thing here. Yep. And apparently, yep. we don't have any good green chili. We don't. That's that's what I've been reading. I I have tasted some green chili recently that I was not a fan of. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. It didn't give me diarrhea or anything, but because I would tell you guys if it did. Yep. What yep. we got? Well, now it's just all pizza. Everyone's talking here. about yeah. what their favorite yeah. philosophy. So you guys see what I mean here? There's there's. Uh, and everybody is is allowed to have their own philosophy of use for guitars and philosophy of use for pizza. Um, pizza philosophy, man. We should have a new channel. It's just us eating just pizza. Just us eating pizza. Yeah, that would that would work out really really, really well for me. <laughs> Why would it work out poorly? <laughs> I think it'd be awesome, dude. Yeah. Uh huh. Mrs. Toast is, like I said, she's back in New Jersey. I wonder if she went to uh, the Miglarino's pizza place that she's always oh, talking about. Tony Miggs. Hopefully. Yeah. And she can, yeah. But then she'll come back and then she'll be like, this pizza, this pizza sucks. sucks. Yeah. Yeah. This is terrible. I don't like it. Mm hmm. You know, you know, they don't have good pizza like. Like they have like in they New have Jersey. In, yeah. Or wherever. She told me that, right. that she was eating a bagel and it was a real bagel. Okay. We don't have real bagels? No, we do not because the water is all wrong. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it's the all about the water. Yeah, it's, yeah. All about, it's all about the water. Yeah, now, I'm sure someone's... T- look, I bet you yeah, that you guy right there is saying something. You can't have... Uh... Yep. 
So anyway, uh-huh. um, so let's get back to philosophy of use for guitars for a little bit. What okay. What's another one, Chris? That's a good one. Philosophy of use. Yeah. For a guitar. Yeah. Um, well, we've well, already decided that like your baby's first guitar. Yeah. We yeah. Somebody mentioned well, that they just be. bought something for for somebody for their son or somebody for a youngster. That wanted to, yeah, wanted to learn how to play. Yeah. So um, it should be it should be something that is cool looking, mm-hmm. easy to play, fits their body. Um, and it doesn't cost an arm and a leg because right. what if they don't like it, you know, or yeah. what if they, yeah. I think, I think, because this phrase came from the gun world mm-hmm. and we're, we're now transitioning it to the guitar world and I don't know anything about the gun world, um, but I would assume that most gun owners don't really need an, an excuse for another gun and just like most guitar players don't need an excuse for another guitar. Yeah. And as soon as you get to the point where you do have to start making up excuses as to why you need another guitar, other than it's cool, I like it, I'm into guitars, um, you know, I whatever. couldn't agree. I couldn't agree more. Um, but it seemed to me like talking about why you should buy this in one of our reveal videos would be a cool yeah, thing to yeah, do. Yeah. And, and, and we can't just do a reveal video and go, you should buy this because it's cool. Every time, I mean, that's going to be true every time. So, you yeah, know. yeah, yeah. So, so we have a, a new customer came in this week, um, and he wants a replica mm, or a recreation of one of his favorite guitars that you can't buy anymore, mm-hmm. and that is the mm, you can't buy new anymore, and that's the Ibanez Talman. Mm-hmm. You guys familiar with that guitar? And so he brought in his guitar, and um, I made a template based on his his uh, his actual guitar. And he wants a few different things. Like, for example, he wants our headstock because he's a cool enough guy, uh, Gil. He's a cool enough guy to go, yeah, I want your headstock because I want it to be a guitar that you made and not, like, I don't want to try to fool anybody into thinking it's an Ibanez. Um you know, and, and the Ibanez, the strings came off the nut nice and straight. <laughs> I yeah, can't believe it. He's some read, of that really bullshit. well yeah. between the, the three on a side being a step backwards, yeah. and, which is some, what somebody said. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, your strings not not coming off the, the nut completely straight. I think what it really Total was. step back. Yeah, was like, I, I like Music Man, and anything that's not a Music Man I think sucks. Okay, that's a philosophy of use too, by the way. I like it. And I want to argue with you about the thing that you have that's not the thing I have and tell you it's not good. That sort of philosophy of use happens a lot on the internet, you guys, as you know. Trying to convince other people to buy the same thing you have? Or trying to convince someone that they don't have what you have and it sucks. Yeah. And, they should, yeah. and they should sell it and immediately get the thing you they like. They really screwed the pooch buying yeah. what they bought. Yeah, they should have bought what I have. Yeah, it's sort of like your drum guy. Mm-hmm. Why'd you buy a '69 Pearl? Those suck. Yeah. You should have. You should have bought a. Bought. Yeah. 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 Uh huh. <laughs> you should have bought something besides a Grizzly pin router. Again, guys, I didn't buy that. Grizzly sent it to me free, free of charge, gratis, for me to do with as I please. Free gratis. Free gratis. That's a good pizza place too. <laughs> so, um, I, oh, so anyway, so his philosophy of use for his new guitar was. Well, I can't get a I can't get a new one of these, so I can't get it like how I want. And I want it in a custom color and I you know, I'm a grown ass man and I want a custom guitar now. You know, I think that's a really cool thing. I don't want to have a bunch of four hundred dollar guitars. I wanna have, you know, one really super awesome custom built for it's kinda of like a signature it's the Gil Martin signature, basically. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, oh, by the way, <laughs> speaking of signature models, did I tell you we sold the uh, the Macintyre Murphy Challenger? You, yeah, I think you mentioned that somebody was interested in it. So, so um, a guy oh, actually he's, he's on payment, right? He, yeah, yeah. He, he's he's doing payments mm-hmm. on it, and um, yeah, I, I'm kind of sad to see that one go, but it, it needs to go. But that's a whole different story. The Macintyre Murphy Texas Toast Challenger that came. Too little, too late, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. And that was a bummer. Yep. But anyway, so I'm glad this guy's getting it and he's working it out. You know why he's working it out, Chris? Because uh, we're cool enough to say, if you want to do it in payments, you can. So, anyway. Yep, yep. So, uh, Talmans are cool. Weird output plate, though. It is a weird output plate. It now, is. Okay, now, now but, whoever, to whoever said that. I asked, that, yeah. Yeah. 
Um, I don't know if this guy's a rifle guy, but I'm not. I'm not going to go down that path. But Andy Mandiac. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Um, what is the What is the defining characteristic of the Ibanez Talman? I would argue that in every your eye goes to that control plate yeah, first. Yeah. Uh huh. Um, whether or not it is the defining characteristic, I don't know. But yeah, and and in some ways it's because we were trying to figure out, you know, what do you if you don't use that, how do you do it? Mm -hmm. And really, it's a it's a tele plate with a strat jack, jack built in, built but in but it's short. It, it only of, has yeah, one well, yeah, one but, control. But the, the, yeah. That's the the basic kind of gist of that, and it mm -hmm. really it sort of looks like a tele thing. It just sort of you know, it's this this chunk of chrome that sits in about the same spot. And the the, the Ibanez Talman is fairly squatty. It's it's definitely yeah, it's, it's like guitar. it's like sixteen and a half inches long. So, um, uh, it, so it's very telly ish, I think, in my mind's eye. Yeah. So so Gil's having us do a bunch of cool stuff. He's doing uh, like the one that he has has a trim that he never uses. So okay, so he wants a fixed bridge. You got it. He. Um, he says, I don't ever use the tone control and I don't ever use the neck pickup. Could we just do one pickup and one and a volume? Hell yeah, we can. Mm -hmm. I want it to be purple metal flake. Can we do that? You bet your ass we can do that. He, so he wants some stuff that, I mean, like he could buy a used Talman. But, yeah. uh, you know, I mean, you could like probably go to Reverb right now and buy a used Talman, mm -hmm. but that's not as cool as having a custom made thing that's, and if, if you like Talmans, who cares? You know, then yeah, that, have that be your your jump off place for your your next custom thing. That's what Gil did. He's smart enough. Yep, yep. If I make my own guitar, does that count as a signature model? Uh, how good are you at making guitars? <laughs> is it is it everything you ever wanted in a guitar? Yeah. If, it's if you were designing a guitar, is that the one you would make? If you were if you designed the guitar, if do you play any other guitars? <laughs> uh, then yeah, I would say then that could be a uh -huh. signature model. What, okay, what if, okay, here's the philosophy of use. I want to make my own signature model guitar. But I don't have the juice with someone like Fender or Paul Reed Smith or Gibson, so I got to go out and I got to source all the components myself. Or I have to buy a bunch of tools and, and make my own guitar. What do you do? You go to Warmoth and buy a strap and sign it? I, I don't know, I mean... We would be happy to make a signature guitar for you. You could even sign the headstock. In fact, it's your it's the signature guitar. You should sign the headstock, right? Yeah. What would your signature guitar be, Chris? I don't, I like too many different things on too many different guitars. Okay. I don't know that I could ever just have one defining guitar. So... I think I think you should have a, the the Chris Fesker signature model should be an updated version with all new stuff 1967 Yamaha <laughs> SG but it has to have that trim. So Yamaha has to go into production and make that trim again. Yeah. You can't put like a mastery on there although you like the mastery a lot. Yeah, but it's not really the same. It's not exactly it? the same. Yeah, and I need to round up Real pickups too, or have yeah. somebody make. Yeah, uh, well, if Yamaha's pickups. making them for you, then yeah, you uh -huh. do whatever you want, right? Yeah, yeah. maybe Jerry Sensel could wind some for yeah, you. Yeah, I was thinking about getting a hold of him. I need to figure out covers to to for for that dumb project. Maybe he can. There's lots of things to to do. Yeah, yeah. You know, in this day and age of um, let me tell you, printing, uh, you know, 3D printing. Oh yeah, and you stuff could like additive that. manufacture yeah, stuff. Uh -huh. That's actually yeah. a pretty it's neat not, idea. Yeah, it's not that that far out of the realm of possibility. And you can, point. with additive manufacturing, you can make stuff out of metal too. Yeah. So you could make a one-off. Yeah. Uh, sixty-seven <laughs> SG trim. Yeah. Well, you got to figure Yamaha SG. It's it's just bent metal. You just need to have somebody that can. Isn't there a cast part? Uh, well, yeah, the, the okay. yeah, I guess the top is cast or stamped or yeah. or something. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, somebody did actually look into having um, top uh, plates made that looked like that. That would work with a mastery or something. Yeah. Okay, that'd yeah. be cool. And it was wasn't cheap, but no, you know, hey. no, it's not. Yeah. So, 
All right. Uh, yeah, somebody asked if you can talk about your kit guitars. Sure, I don't have any kit guitars. <laughs> Are, do they mean the kit guitar that you bought? No, I don't think so. Um, I think they're talking about, because we've talked about kit guitars or doing, like, like if somebody wants us to... To build a body in a neck. Oh, 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 okay. That's what I, I thought you meant like a means. box of, of yeah, all the stuff no, that was ready no, to go. I don't think so. Um, yeah, so we would be happy to build you, um, if, again, if you wanted, like, this happens a lot. Hey, I have this design that I came up with. Can you turn it from a drawing on a piece of paper to a, yeah. a, a real life guitar? Mm -hmm. um, that's really not a kit, though, is it? No, not really, but it sort of is. I mean, it's, yeah. Uh, I, I, so what other word would you use for that? I, yeah, I don't know. Um, signature guitar. I'm not sure. <laughs> so I've, get, I've gotten a lot of questions about, hey, that's cool. Will you ever offer it in a kit? Mm, probably not. Because I don't know what that's going to, that, what that would do. We're not in the kit guitar business. And, and frankly, I think, when you say kit guitar, to me that conjures up price uh, uh, points in the low 200s or low 300s, upper 200s maybe. Yeah. And that's not where we live. Well, yeah, that's not really our, our capability. It's, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because unfortunately, both of us have to make a living. Y yeah. I mean, so like the, the shop rent is, you know, two grand a month, whether we make anything or not. So, um, and then there's that whole keeping Mrs. Toast in the lavish l luxury that she's come be <laughs> become accustomed to in Arvada. Uh -huh. So, yeah. Jet setting off to New York. Jet setting off to, yeah. On a whim. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. So, yeah. I, I guess I mean I would I would certainly welcome your questions. Uh, send them to me in a, in an email, please. Uh, you can get in touch with me through the website, TexasToastGuitars.com. Excuse me. There's a contact section there. Um, let me know what you want and what sort of price range you're talking about. Um, I can help you with a lot of that stuff. If you just want me to do woodwork, then sure. That that's stuff that we do. We do a lot of that. So like for example. Hey, I want a Prince Cloud guitar. Can you make me a kit of that? Could I do that? Yeah, I think you could do that. I wonder Don't you if you go do that right now. Okay, hold on. You vamp for a little I'll bit. I'll vamp for a little while. Ready, go. <laughs> Hurry up, Matt. I don't know what to do. Said that deer in the headlights yeah. Again. Philosophy. There's a lot of talk of, of me needing a haircut. I know. I do need a haircut. And it either needs to get a lot longer really fast and better and more manageable, or I need to just go and get a haircut. And I think probably the haircut's gonna gonna be the thing that happens. So yeah, that's sad. So, okay, hold on. <laughs> Joseph Castlewell asked how how's Mrs. Toast gonna survive out east without legal weeds? Maybe Not maybe illegal weeds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the same way she used to survive yeah. with without legal weeds. Whiskey. So if you mm -hmm. wanted, so let's just say for the sake of conversation that you wanted a, a facsimile of the Prince Cloud guitar in a kit form, ready to go, and you said, hey, Matt, can you make me one? And I said, you bet I can. It would look a little bit like this. This has so much more. What a weird guitar. It's so little. It's so little bitty, you guys. It's the cutest little guitar. So this is a neck through. It's all maple. And this is the first time that it's actually all been glued up that we haven't had to sit yeah. and hold parts and go, I think it's going to be neat. <laughs> so yeah, we actually glued it up today. It's got so much more shaping work to be done on it. And um, I am looking forward to doing all of that. And God, this neck. It's funny because the horn actually sticks out over the neck. I'm not sure how it was originally done, but in order to use... A two nomadic height bridge, the neck has to have about a two degree, 2.2 .2 degree angle on it to work. So if you, if that's something that you were thinking when you said, hey, can you make me a kit guitar? Then absolutely. We can do lots of that stuff. Yeah. So um, Lonnie's the one that asked and he says, I don't have the, the skill or tools to do more than assemble and try to finish a guitar. 
Okay, so, so you want yeah. something where yeah. we help you out with the woodwork and mm-hmm. do. Yeah. yeah, that'd be cool, man. Yeah, and there's lots of talk of kit guitars sucking and stuff like that. Well, I think that that there, there's kit guitars and well, then there's kit guitars. Yeah, and right? I think I think we're talking a lot about about those. But I think there's also another step in that, too. You know, there's there's this kind of thing, but there's also some some pretty premium makers of of bodies and necks. Oh, no where doubt you can about do all it. of that yeah. stuff too. Now they don't make. They don't make everything. They don't make everything, and that's where we fall. Is yeah. when you can't get it from Warm Off, or you know whatever. Then, then I, you come I, to us, and we'll make it. I for su- you. you know I suppose that Warm Off is a is a kit in a way, but man, everything I've ever seen or gotten from Warm Off has been like really excellent. Yeah, I mean, if you're buying stuff from War, if you bought every part from Warm Off, you could probably just bolt it together. Um, now they're going to tell you you should, you know, level and dress the frets. But I don't. I've known a lot of guys who bought warm off necks that just popped them on there and done. Again, they would tell you that's not how, what you're supposed to do. But, um, but yeah, the warm. I, to compare a warm off a set of warm off parts with a set of Chinese kit parts, that's that's two very very different animals there. Yeah. Yeah. One is the Fantastopotamus, and the other is the, I don't know, Field Mouse? I don't know what, yeah. What's a Fantastopotamus? Okay. Fraggle stick car. <laughs> Fraggle stick car, yeah, I got it. What, what's that? All right. <laughs> yeah. What's the philosophy of use on the Prince Cloud guitar? Uh... Prince, to, to, Prince Tribute Band? Yeah, Prince Tribute Band, <laughs> or to stand in front of the mirror naked with Prince guitar on and... Hoping that Apollonia will... <laughs> suddenly appear. Dude, I've, I've like, heard... Like a mist. I've heard that if you stand in front of the mirror with a Prince Cloud guitar naked and wish really, really hard, Apollonia will appear. Say Apollonia three times. Or Vanity. Or Vanity, yeah. Which one? Apollonia is sort of like a... Uh, she's like, like a... She's a the, preacher or something. Yeah, I think now, so. Right? Yeah, she uh-huh. found she found Jesus or something. Uh-huh. That's cool. What about Vanity? Uh, I don't know. What about Lisa Lisa? I don't I don't keep up with them as much <laughs> I, as I used to. I I don't know. Yeah, I have no idea. Yeah, they they could all be doing a lot of things. No, I th- one of them died. I think some. I think one of them did. One of the one Vanity of like, Lisa or Lisa Apollonia. or Vanity or I think or Lisa Apollonia. Lisa's still around. I think it might have been Vanity with with the cult jam. I that think so. sucks. Yeah. Well, what about Sheena E? She's still She's rocking still around. it. Oh, yeah. Wonder what drum set Sheena E's playing now. 69 what a Pearl. 69 Pearl. She might be, she I don't know. She's better than that. She yep. can jam. Mm-hmm. Remember her on uh, Crush Groove? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> All you're doing is showing your age, man. I know it. I wasn't around then. No, I don't have any idea mm-hmm. what you're talking about. POU just, on your ukulele? Um, okay, that's a great POU, actually. I want something that's not very expensive that I can woo women on the beach at night with a fire. <laughs> or, uh, POU for ukulele, tiptoeing through the tulips. There you go. Who asked that? Uh, the ukulele thing? Yeah. Well, you, whoever you uh, are, you're welcome. Yeah. P-O-U for ukulele. See, it's easy, guys. You just have to engage your brain a little bit and not go, ukulele? I don't know, playing ukulele. Yeah, come on. It's easy. And fun. I hope that you guys latch on to uh, 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 philosophy of use and you, you use it here and in other forums that you go to. <laughs> and you, you get other guys on forums who have no idea who I am go, the hell does that mean? Philosophy of use. It's a guitar. You just play it. And when they say that, you know that they're probably stupid. <laughs> now that I now that I know what it is, yeah. I'm down with it. And it's, it's like, oh, yeah. okay, yeah, that's kind of fun. It's pretty obvious, right? It's like, oh yeah, it's like, you know. I still don't know what those words mean in in that order. Of philosophy of use. Yeah, you do, sure. You philosophy. Do. Sure. Use mm-hmm. of you know what all those words mean. I uh, individually. Yeah. But not not in that that way. But now that I know what you mean, what's the, now I'm good with it. Maybe I'm a better person. Now. What's the POU for an uh, 
Vintage Hamer 12 string bass. Rockabilly band. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Sticks cover band. Sticks cover. Mm, Cheap trick cover Cheap band. Cheap trick cover band. Sure. I, I get those two mixed up. I don't know why. Dude. Oh man. I. I. I love Cheap Trick. Sticks, not so much. Not a, not a huge, not a giant Sticks fan. Well, you know, if, if if somebody plays me their music, I don't get them mixed up. But but just mm. talking randomly about them. You get I the names. Go to Sticks you get the first. You, yeah. you get the word. Yeah. The, the words mixed up. Yeah, I yeah. think so. Do you have public school dyslexia? I do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I what else? I is, do. What else do we got going on here? Um, Does anybody, everybody like my Prince Cloud guitar? Joseph Caswell says, philosophy of use, all guitars can be for any style of play. Mm, I agree that all guitars can be played in any style, but I do not agree that they work equally well for any style. Yeah. So Joseph Caswell... What would you, I mean, so like if Carrie King came out on stage with a, an ovation. Breadwinner. Uh, no, no, Breadwinner would be okay. Deacon. Actually. I was going to say a, an ovation uh, acoustic. Balladeer. Guitar. Yeah, with those holes in the thing here. Oh. You'd be like, wow, <laughs> Carrie King kind of took a downgrade in pointy guitars. <laughs> I think one of the reasons that, that Stratocasters are, because everybody talks about how a Stratocaster, oh, they're so versatile. It has to be the most versatile guitar ever in the history of, of electric it's guitars. definitely up there, that's for sure. Well, why is that? <sighs> oh, okay, I see what you mean. Yeah, I think it's because, because it's, it's one of the earliest guitars, mm -hmm. and because for a long time, you just didn't have any other option. Okay. And there's eight gazillion of them around, and people have used them for everything. But it's so got you're three pickups and a whammy bar. Woo! 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 It's got, yeah. Yeah, but, but people are used to seeing them visually in all sorts of contexts. Yeah. You know, it's one of the few guitars that you could actually say, well, yeah, you could play heavy metal with that in a fairly stock setup. Sure. Uh, you know? I look look at the guys in Iron Maiden. Exactly. They, they, they rock strats yeah. a lot of the time. Yeah. 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 And okay. Adrian, whatever his name is, plays a strat. I think almost exclusively. Mm -hmm. The other guy sometimes has an SG. Oh, well, here's a here's a great POU for you. I'm going on tour because everyone looks cool with one. Well, there mm. you go. Yeah. So I'm going on tour, mm -hmm. and I'm going on my own plane. And my lead singer is going to pilot the plane for me. I know the answer to this. What? No, keep going. And I need my guitar to be stable through climates that are very arid to very humid. Mm -hmm. And back again. And what guitar should I pick for that? Vintage Gibson SG. <laughs> That's right. Vintage Gibson SG. Or 335. <laughs> or 335. Yeah, that's a good one, too. <laughs> that's some bitch yeah. Actually, I would say... Anything that's got the ovation plastic back where it could crack away from there, because it will. Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's gonna. Uh huh. Telly is universally the, the most capable guitar in any genre. What if you need to bend notes? You can't bend notes can't on other guitars? Notes. No, Telly. Telly so, is universally the most so capable guitar. You had a music man stingray, you couldn't bend a no, note on it? No, I don't mean bend notes, I mean, there's no tremolo. You, on well, a telly. What if you had a B bender on your telly? Ah, dude. What else can you put a B bender on? Nothing. Yeah, I, 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 I don't think you can <laughs> I, actually. I, I don't know. There's probably, you probably some can. sort of yeah, kludge yeah. together B bender on uh -huh. on a on a BC Rich Mockingbird, yeah, but yeah. I've never seen it. Wouldn't that be cool? A Prince Cloud guitar with a B bender. And a Bigsby. Weep. <laughs> and a big. This could get a Bigsby. It could. Yeah. It's it's it would work for that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my favorite part of all of this is it people's people's need to get other people to play the same guitar that they play. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and I'm not talking about people on this group. I'm talking about just universally. And I know a lot of guys that are really, really into strats. Yeah. And for whatever reason, they cannot, for the life of them, figure out why nobody mm -hmm. or why everybody doesn't play a strat. Mm -hmm. And that alone is enough reason for me to not want to play a strat. Yeah. You know, and and they're just you know, and how boring would life be if everybody played a strat? Well, you know, do you ever see that picture of Django Reinhardt with the flying V? Yeah, I haven't, but that's, <laughs> I would like to see that. I, was he even alive when that was a guitar? I, I don't know. I don't. Probably I don't know. Probably not. 
I'm not sure what, yeah, when, when Django Reinhardt was alive, but. West Montgomery and the Explorer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, if you, don't, if you don't have a strat, you're somehow a lesser form of human. You are failing as a citizen failing if you don't have a strat. You don't, well, and not only have a strat, but, but love it and revere it as the one true and holy guitar. There's that. Uh-huh. There's that. There's so, a big comment that just came in from somewhere. Yeah. Um, what does that one say? Well, there's, there's several big ones. Read some of them off here. We got, we got a few more minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, Jimmy Page has a B-bender on a Les Paul. Does he? Okay. Yep. Um, got some dead air here. Sorry. Uh, no, Strats don't like the scale. I don't know what that means. I don't think that means he doesn't like the 25 and a half inch scale. Oh, no, Strats don't like the scale. Yeah. Okay, depends yeah. on how I read it. If I put in, if I put commas, no, Strat, <laughs> don't like the scale. There you go. Yeah, depends on how you, where you, where you put the punctuation. Uh, Jingo Reinhardt died in 53. So Good he would know. not have been around for the flying V or the thank you, whoever. Yeah, was yeah. Um, yeah. Tally's been on my list for a long time. May have to get one. Yep. You know, what you could get is a Colorado Beetle Kill Pine Tally kit. From your friends at Texas Toast Guitars, we would be happy to help you with that. Send me an email. Uh, you can get in touch with me through the website, and we can help you out with that stuff. <laughs> what do you got? Uh, point of uh, philosophy of use for a 12-string guitar, to play one song. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. His song is Closer to the Heart. Really? Sure. That's what it says here. Yeah, oh, okay. Song, closer to the heart. All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've had a bunch of 12 strings. I actually have one now, and somebody's like, how's it sound? I don't know. It sounds like a 12 sounds string. Sounds like man. the bird. What's it supposed to sound like? Yeah, I'm yeah. not, I don't know enough bird songs to tell you how it sounds. Yeah. Sounds yeah. like a 12 string to me. Sounds like one to me, baby. Yeah. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed this conversation about uh, philosophy of use. If you um, want to talk a little bit more about it, and you want to deep dive with me, you can get in touch with me at uh, through the website. That's texastoastguitars.com. Um, please share in the comment section, too, your various guitars and the POUs associated with those. In case, you know, the comment section is sort of like the Road Warrior. Sometimes there's good stuff in there that you, you have to dig a little bit and you can find it. And there's some, there's some uh, gnashing of teeth. Um, in the comment section. What's that have so, to do with the road warrior? I don't know. Just go with it. Yeah. <laughs> Thought so, it was a white line nightmare. <laughs> that would gangs have been... killing gangs. <laughs> it's not. It's nothing like that. Yeah. Actually, the comment section's fairly tame, but every so often we'll get like some bozo head who you know and you wants love to. It. I do love that. So thank you to all the bozo heads. So um, let's see what. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the conversation about POU. And, um, uh, and next time we talk about it, everybody will know what we're talking about. That's right. In, in fact, the next video, they'll be like, yeah, totally. That's my POU, in fact, too. In the next video, we're not even going to call it philosophy of use. We're going to call it POU. POU. So anyway, um, guys, thank you for tuning in. If you are looking for something to do and you're in the Denver metro area on the night, yes? <laughs> POU for my Gibson Marauder keeps the case company. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. I think the Gibson Marauder, Marauder was made with tone board. Yeah, which that I was wanna that one. I want to say was... It's, it's like a surfboard almost. MDF. Yeah. Or chipboard. I don't I know. I thought it was that was something harder over the top, but maybe Oh, may, maybe. I, I, don't, I don't know. We talked about it one time before. Okay. Yeah, it's, yeah, I don't it's know. some sort of foam board. Oh, I oh, is think. it? I, I, thought, I thought it was like know. wood and glue yeah. mashed yeah. together under pressure. I'm yeah, not sure. Yeah, we should make one. That'll be the next thing we do. Yeah, what? How many MDF more pieces guitar. of wood could we use, or what else could we use? And yeah, without getting into the epoxy thing, ooh, pretzel guitar. People, a lot of people have asked me to make the dog turd guitar. I'm yeah, not, I'm not making yeah, the dog turd. Yeah, that'll be a fun one. Anyway, guys, if you're in the Denver area and you want to hang out with us uh, on December 19th, we are having a party at Flipside Music, the Great American Guitar Store. It's a Christmas party, so it is. Yeah, you guessed it. The Great oh. American Christmas Party. Um, and that is December 19th. That's a Thursday night from 6 to whenever it goes. We're going to be doing a live stream uh, where we talk about the um, 
top five uh, last minute gift ideas for the guitar player on your list. And um, since we're gonna be at Flipside, uh, Ike's gonna have a bunch of that stuff ready to go. You can order it directly from Ike. Um, we're also gonna be drinking beer and probably eating pizza or cannolis or whatever. I don't know what we're gonna be doing. Do they have good pizza over there? Mm, probably not. <laughs> oh yeah, they do. They have Fat Sully's. It's pretty good. <laughs> they have Little Caesars right there. They too. don't have that famous pizza, that sucky famous pizza. That They have that other famous there. pizza though that's like two blocks away from there too. There were two famous pizzas. Yeah, I think they're both gone. Oh. Yeah, because they both stunk. So anyway, um, if you're in the Denver area on the 19th, please stop over to Flipside Music, the Great American Guitar Store, and come say hey to us, play some of our guitars, hang out with us, have some food, have some mm -hmm. drinks, have some laughs. Um, maybe learn something. Maybe learn something. You know what? You might even meet someone new because maybe there'll be mistletoe. I don't know. If you're a fine foxy lady and you're looking to hook up with Chris and you've got some mistletoe, that could happen. I don't know. Or it's going to be a bunch of dudes making out under mistletoe. Hey, you know, live how you want to live. Yeah. If, yeah. That's, if that's your thing, great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if, that's, if that's what you're into, then yeah, yeah rock on. Yeah. So anyway, guys, this is Matt at Texas Toast Guitars. This is Chris at Texas Toast Guitars. Reminding you that life is short. You might as well have a cool guitar. And for everybody who tells me I'm doing it wrong, remember that if you're so smart, build it yourself. That's what I do. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next Sunday. See ya. I barely reach it. Boop, boop.